Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Tel NTV's weekly talk show, Talking Point. I'm your host, Syed Niaz Ahmed. In our studios today, we have a young parliamentarian from Bangladesh, Naheem Razak. He is here in London, passing through, and we thought it would be a golden opportunity to get him to our studios to talk about a few things. He is on the Parliamentary Committee for Sports and Youth, and we wish to talk about those two issues, those, those two areas, but obviously, being in the Parliament, he will be a useful person to talk about politics. Sir. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for wading through the Black Friday traffic of London today. Well, it was pretty <laughs> difficult for it me to get It was Black you. Friday. It was a Black Friday. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, what brings you to London? I'm just passing by. I just went to Canada. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I attended IPU, mm -hmm. Interparliamentary Union mm -hmm. Youth Conference. What did that do? Well, Interparliamentary Union Youth Conference mainly mm -hmm. takes into consideration about 167 countries represented by youth members of parliament. Right. The main concept out there is just to collaborate mm -hmm. and bring out new ideas, mm -hmm. innovation in terms of how we can promote democracy, how we, we can contribute uh, by coordinating and uh, collaborating between each other, and how we can actually have a prosperous world itself, I guess. Well, that's the main that's a very interesting aspect. I'll, I'll go back to, go to that later, see, the promoting uh, democracy. See. That, that's something which is very close to my heart. Uh, you studied business and marketing, isn't it? Yes, I did start at, my studies in at, at Middlesex Middle University in Middlesex London University. and later at Kingston. And then my master's in Kingston University. Yes. Uh, there were some events personal, uh, personally related to you uh, that uh, changed the course of your life and uh, you ended up in politics, you see. So Mr. Nahim Razak, who wanted to become a marketing personality, is now <laughs> marketing himself, marketing politics, in Bangladesh Parliament. <laughs> right. How, how do you find politics? Well, I've always had a nag in politics. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. guess uh, my father being one of the leading politicians and of his generation, I guess, yes. politics is in my blood anyway. And I've always had an interest in it. Yeah. I've always yes. been involved with a lot of social activities and as such. Yeah. But uh, I was very privileged mm -hmm. that my father allowed me to pursue what I wanted to do and what I um, had a knack for, I guess. Right. So as such, I kind of pursued my education in marketing mm -hmm. and business. Yep. And then obviously later on, I uh, undergrad, my post-graduation I did in marketing. And I was even working in the UK for about a year and a half. Right. And the turning point as such, it is every person has a kind of turning point in their life, I guess. Um, 21st August 2004, I think that was a turning point for me. Um, we are all aware of the fact that the the assassination attempt at the present Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and the senior leaders of Awami League in front of 23 Bangabundu Avenue at the party's office, the whole bombing experience was right, um, right. has affected all of us as a right. family member. Okay. So uh, I would like to, I would like you to. Tell us something about your education, because I, I, I see that you have been to different places. You've been to Darjeeling, you've been to Ajmer, and then you finally <laughs> came to <laughs> the United Kingdom. Well, it, it is kind of a... Well, kind Ajmer of a is always, to me, Ajmer, I've been there, it's always a spiritual center rather than <laughs> of education. <laughs> no, it, it, is, it is funny enough you mention it, because, see, being in a political family, not everyone actually understands how difficult the life is. Right. Uh, obviously, my father had to go through a lot of uh, trouble in his political career. Mm -hmm. So he thought that it would be better for me to actually to be, away. Uh, be away. I did study in a very, very good school in Bangladesh, Government Laboratory the High School. Lab school yes. Yeah, and then later on, I went to St. Paul's Darjeeling, which is a very prestigious school itself. It's a boarding mm -hmm. uh, school. And, and you I did, it, I did, did my 10th grade. There. Yes, 10th grade from there. And then I moved to Mayo College, Ajmer, which is also a very renowned school right. in India. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a shift from the mountains, the cold to the desert and the hot. <laughs> to Rajasthan. <laughs> to Rajasthan. And uh, fortunately enough, 
obviously my family uh, they live in uh, my pater maternal family they live in london so mm -hmm. my father mm -hmm. thought that it would be better that i actually uh, get my education in uh, london but then right. again i was very i was a studious boy but then again i was more into sports mm -hmm. so i initially i got my offer into one year post scholarship i guess right. in middlesex university and mm -hmm. that's the first offer that we accepted and that's how i landed up in london i guess great you enjoyed your time at middlesex absolutely yes right. absolutely. you were there for about uh, four years i studied there three years i did a sandwich course and mm -hmm. i reduced a four-year course to a three-year right and then Immediately after that, I got into Middlesex University, which was very renowned for marketing. So right. I was lucky enough to get into Middlesex University for my post-graduation. Do, do you use your marketing uh, knowledge or technique that you have learned in, in, well, in absolutely. politics? Absolutely. Life is all about marketing right. ourselves, I guess. So it, it helps right. uh, being from that uh, field itself and having a knack in it and having a, in, an interest in it. It does mm -hmm. help. Um, to market ourselves and the market not only ourselves but also market our area, our uh, constituencies as well because you right. need to promote your constituencies mm -hmm. because as such you are responsible for uh, the uh, 500,000 population that you have in your constituency. So this, is, this definitely helps and uh, along with the constituencies I work in a very different uh, areas which is very interesting and very kind of mm -hmm. for the future of Bangladesh it is it plays a bigger role which is the youth so I do uh, try to uh, uh, apply my knowledge that I have received my, in my education and even in my career as a right. professional marketing person into nowadays what I do which is uh, politics and uh, promoting people Right, Bangladesh is a young nation, and, and uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, the, the, the sizable population of the country is young, young persons, you see. Uh, you, you definitely you get in touch with them, you, you come across uh, a number of people, uh, and uh, you have mentioned somewhere that uh, youth uh, should be integrated into mainstream politics. Uh, I understand that they already are, I mean, and uh, probably more than what they should be. Well, Bangladesh has had a huge and long culture of student politics being involved yes. in the mainstream yes. policy making. But um, as of lately, we have seen the youth being not interested in politics because of a lot of uh, cultural gap, a lot of well, gap I mean, between uh, what they want to see and what the politics at present is. So what we as in me along with a, a few members of parliament as well as a lot of activists what we started doing is in 2014 under the leadership obviously i have to mention um, <laughs> the advisor <laughs> to the prime minister uh, the prime minister's son shoji wadid joy under his leadership along with uh, radwan mujib siddiq and cri center for research and information we started a program uh, which led to the first national youth platform, which is, right. which has, the name has been given Young Bangla. So <coughs> I fortunately am the convener for that uh, Young Bangla, and that's the platform where we have more or less about seventy-five thousand youth volunteers, over uh, thirteen hundred youth organization, just connecting each other. But, but you already have things. Jubo League and Chhatra League, so in in every college. And no, means it is. You see, the point is that not everyone wants to be uh, into student politics, and not everyone has the opportunity to be in pol student probably, student politics. Well, probably that's a very, very uh, honest uh, statement, yes, but probably it is. But uh, as we see from abroad, you see, it seems that uh, everybody is no, no, part no, no, of... No, not a really. You see, uh, student politics has always generated good leadership. Uh, but at the it same time... It used to, that's what I understand, that's well, what I've it seen. It used to, I guess, and it still does, I think. There are a lot of talented student politicians nowadays. Uh, the trend is changing. You know, more kind of because academies, the people are getting into colleges. colleges. The schools, they used to throw up good... good uh, Absolutely. ...debaters, yes. Uh, yes. good thinkers, mm. uh, good analysts. Absolutely. And they would become the leaders of... Yeah, I, I remember my father telling me, like, you know, when there was the student elections yes. in Dakshu or Rakshu or whichever mm -hmm. university, they used to always hunt for those uh, students who were studious. Right. And first, second, third 
uh, in their it, classes. It, it, so they used to hunt for those people it, and they used to get them in, integrated it, and it, it, be into it, is politics. Is it the same situation now? Well, nowadays you do not get student elections in universities. So Why? that thing does not exist. And even private universities well, you should do know not. Because you are looking after the youth affairs. Well, yes, but uh, private universities, they do not want politics to be integrated into uh, the private university. Public universities have is had because difficulties. Because politics is, uh, is the center of, of disturbance? Not really. I think it is the perception. I think it's all about perception. And I think the last uh, uh, Dhaka University, uh, the student electoral body, that was, uh, I think it happened in 1991, I think that was the last time, or 1990. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Yes, since then there has not been any uh, electoral student body. Mm -hmm. But what the present government has done, um, not that everyone is aware of, is that in schools we have tried to promote uh, leadership by, this is the first time I think uh, this year it's been promoted as such, the class and group-wise, I guess. They elect their own representative mm -hmm. who talk on their behalf to the school managing committee as to what are the different changes and what are the benefits that they should be uh, catered for. So this is a starting of another step, I think, forward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is, we, has, we have already, the government has already initiated this already. But what we have tried to do is integrate the brilliant minds who have already taken a lot of initiatives by themselves. You know, I have come across uh, youth organizations with mere resources. <coughs> they have done so much for the own community. Yeah, but what sort of job do they, they do? See, what they do, they are professionals or they're doing business or they're doing anything else or the mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. But what they have done, they have catered for different social issues. The sh social issues such as child marriage, maybe against drugs, maybe to promote sports, maybe to promote for disabled. You know, these are the initiatives that they have picked on and what they have done, they have organized themselves right. in getting these sort of initiatives more kind of vocally but, but in, in, in any applied civilized in their society, community any civilized society, in any democracy, you have government agencies, you've got ministries looking after such uh, you know, problems, you see. And you want to involve the youth into that? Well, of course, of course, because you see, uh, the government themselves really has limitations in terms of doing their work. It is public and private initiative individuals and organizations initiatives corporate sector are giving their inputs and contributing towards these sort of initiatives that will together will create uh, in an environment where everyone can prosper it is not one segment only prospering by themselves it is everyone prospering towards a better life and better environment for ourselves so i think this is very important that everyone needs to understand that it is not mm -hmm. only the government who will actually initiate this sort of <coughs> activities or this sort mm -hmm. of programs, but it is also the private initiators. They need to be promoted. So we act from our own self, mm -hmm. I guess. It mm -hmm. is, we are a non-profit organization. So I guess what we try to do, we try to get these guys connected. Right. And we try to find out what are the requirements that they have, and we try to give them those resources. Like Microsoft has come, come on board with us. Microsoft is obviously a well-known, reputed, uh, huge company, multinational companies. They are grieving almost in the region of, they've all, all, already trained around 1,000 of young volunteers uh, into digital literacy. So this is something that they want to do. Mm -hmm. So these are ways of actually connecting different ideas, different resources and making them available and connecting these guys who are already doing a lot of things for their community with government initiatives, with private initiatives. Right. Let's go back to your, uh, your election to the parliament. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. Uh, you, elect, you have been elected twice, I see, once for, uh, through the by-election. Yes. And the, the last one was in 2014. Yes. Uh, from your Shariat to three constituency, and that number is, I think, two to three. And Goshair Hart and something. Yes, I have it about three Upozala, yes. 19 new unions, and three Poroshabas. It's a pretty big. Uh, Bedora Ganja and all that. Right. Uh, what happened in the 2014 election? Did you, did you contest against somebody or did you no, contest unfortunately, a walkover? Unfortunately, 
there was nobody to contest with. Right. Uh, saying that, uh, there is a lot of controversy, a lot of talk about a lot of things. But right. I want to make it very clear right. with everyone not being biased about something. In a race, when you start a race, uh, you, me, and several others, they're on the line. And when the gun goes off, you know, I start running and you don't start running. So it's not my fault. So it is responsible right. act by political parties. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, they should be responsible for it. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there are a lot of controversies <coughs> that uh, the bigger... One of the bigger parties, BMP and yeah. its allies, did not actually participate. Yeah. But it was by our prime minister and obviously the, our party leader, Sheikh Hasina, who has tried her level best uh, to actually ensure that they participate. You know, uh, and you must be very much aware, and we can recollect the whole thing. She made a call to the okay. uh, former um, prime Minister Begum Zia telling her to participate, what are the portfolios she would take in and so forth. You, you, so it you, is a political process. Right. But we you feel happy to, that, yes. Sir. Absolutely. You, I, think, I think there is no qualm in uh, saying that, yes, we are very confident and we are very much satisfied that the You feel happy happened. that you do represent the people. Absolutely. It is, it is a pleasure. If, if there were, and, and, uh, if there were uh, an election, you would have got the majority vote. Well, absolutely. Yes, I'm very much confident. Right. And going forward to the next election, definitely very much confident that I've done not enough, but I should mm -hmm. be doing more. Mm -hmm. And going forward, definitely will bring a lot right. of changes yeah. to the constituency. Uh, you are also taking keen interest in the schools in your area, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. yes. How many schools do you have? Well, altogether, right now, we have about 24 schools, high schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have three colleges. So, yes, it is something uh, that is very dear to me. And I think uh, getting the uh, privilege of having the education which my parents gave me, I think it's always uh, a challenge and always uh, a responsibility but from my end to actually contribute towards quality education. So this mm -hmm. is where I really firmly actually have an interest and I put my foot down in making sure that quality education is provided and that quality students getting their uh, diploma or getting their graduation come out and be a professional. So this is a standard that I want to maintain for myself and I mean, for my constituency. You, you are thinking about not, not just uh, teaching uh, or, or people getting degrees in, 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 in liberal arts, but also practical uh, Absolutely. professions. I think practical and more or less, what's more important for me is ethical and moral uh, education. These are very, very important for me personally, and I think people and the textbook, unfortunately, do not provide as much as it should be. Mm -hmm, uh, but mm -hmm. when we were growing up, we went through the curriculum. There were moral and uh, ethical uh, education, which was very important for a man or a woman or a girl or a boy to actually have those characters that builds their characters. If you do not have uh, strong characters, if you do not have core values, really, you, means just studying and getting good grades is not enough right. for a good citizen. We'll come back to these uh, areas, but uh, we need to take a break. So here it is. Thank you for being with us. So we'll be shortly taking a break, and then we'll be back again talking to our distinguished guest today. Thank you. <laughs>